Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Psy Wars. Psy Wars is a two-player trading card game or living card game, depending on how they're going to make it. And the objective is going to be to destroy your opponent. You're going to start with 20 to 40 health, depending on what you guys want to decide. And you're each going to get a deck of cards. In this deck of cards, you're going to get different things, such as beings and cyborgs and robots, along with equipment, some spells, and uh, the ability to play the cards. There's going to be stuff like this, creation units. This one's a bio-acceleration unit. And you're going to be using those creation units to summon monsters and equipment and whatnot. Throughout your turns, you're going to be able to attack and equip and uh, disorient your target. If you can disorient them, then you can attack them, and if you're able to attack them and roll the right number of die, you're going to be able to kill them. Afterwards, you can choose whether you want to defend or not with your creatures, and if you don't choose, you can actually take damage straight to your health points. If you get to zero health points, you're going to lose, but if you can get your opponent to zero, you're going to win. That's the basic idea of the game. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here's the component overview for Psy Wars, and as you can see, each player has their own unique deck of cards, along with we're going to be using some dice. These ones are not included, the ones I have at home. But we're going to start with 30 health apiece. I have it at 30 and 0, along with our little player uh, explanation board here, which will determine attacker strength and defender strength, and whether you'll win or lose based on die roll. You're also going to be getting boxes for each of your decks, and these are actually unique cards that are basically holographic foils that actually move when you go back and forth with them. But they're the basic cards you actually can get in the decks themselves. You're going to set these aside for now though and just look at the decks here. And to start the game you're going to get eight cards. You're going to draw four, five, six, seven, eight for each player and uh, if they don't like their hand they can actually go ahead and decide to not keep it. And the way that works is after drawing your eight cards and looking at your hand you have to make sure you have enough creation units in your hand and if you don't you can choose if you'd like to get rid of it. You're going to go ahead and set the cards aside and then draw new cards from the deck if you'd like up to your eight maximum hand size. And then after that, you're gonna go ahead and put the cards back into the deck. Make sure you give them a good shuffle. And that is the basic idea. After everybody has their eight cards in their hand, the game is ready to begin, starting with the first player, which is chosen at random. Speaking of what cards you get in your hand, let's go ahead and talk about a couple of them first before we get into play. Now the first thing you're going to notice are these creation unit cards, and they're all different colors. There's five, four different colors in total, along with white being any color you'd like to choose. You've got the Neurogenesis and you've got dig Digital Splicing here in this player's hand. They're both creation units, but one is green and one is blue. These are going to be used as currency in order to purchase cards from your hand and put them onto the field. Here's an equipment card. The cost is going to be in the top left hand corner, and then of course its stats are going to be down below. You're going to have two different types of defenses along with your physical attack strength, and that is going to be used to destroy your opponent. Now, first of all, you'll be doing these things back and forth depending on the stats and trying to get make sure your opponent is disabled. If you can disable them, then you can attack them and they can't attack back, so that's pretty useful. Of course, this is an equipment card, which means when you play on the field on the next turn, you're able to equip it to a unit provided it allows you to do so. There's three main types of units that I'm aware of, which is beings, robots, and cy cyborgs, and uh, it tells you on the equipment whether you can attach them or not. Each character can be equipped with one equipment card, and it's going to give them a kind of a boost in stats depending on which color it's going to be. Not only that though, but you can at attack in this game, and similar to other games like Magic the Gathering and Yu-Gi-Oh, you're able to attack with multiple monsters, but what's unique is you're actually able to attack with more than one monster, monster equipped to each other at once. So you can attack with this guy and another guy by simply stacking them and adding their stat total, making them more powerful. And you're going to be going and doing that throughout the game. If you're able to destroy your opponent's monster, Monster, it's going to remove them from the game, and if their opponent chooses not to block with any of their monsters or equip their monsters and block, then it actually will hit their opponent's life points. And if they hit zero life points, then you're going to win the game. That is the basic idea of how it works. Let's go ahead and show you a couple turns and how play works. So now back to the board, and as you can see, I've went ahead and separated each player's hand, which will actually remain hidden from the opponent. But so you guys can get an idea of what's going to be in your hand, I'm just going to go ahead and show you. And I've also separated them in types. You've got the creation units and or resources here. You've got the type of monster, which is going to be here. You've got equipment cards, and you've also got powers. Powers are basically like spells that you can use to give you some kind of benefit in the game. The person who's going to start make sure that everybody's life total is set up and you've got two die to be able to use throughout the game, and also is not going to draw from the deck on their first turn. However, what they're going to get to do is play a creation unit. So I'm going to go ahead and move these cards down a little bit. They can play their creation unit and it's going to start like this. And whenever they would choose to use it, they're going to simply turn it to the side. Now the cost of the cards is going to be up here in the top left hand corner, as I said before. And if I wanted to, maybe I wanted to play this one here. So maybe this blue one wouldn't be a good option. So I'd play this one. I would then be able to uh, move this card to the side. And if it had the right cost, I could play the card. Now this one says one red and one blue. So I'm going to have to wait to play that equipment card. This is two red, a blue and a white, which is 
use anything, which is going to be basically four of these things here. These things are special power powers. These guys are going to let you be able to search your deck for more creation units, which will allow you to play more monsters throughout the game. After you're done, if you cannot do anything, you're going to end your turn. There's going to be three portions of the battlefield. You've got the lab, the battlefield, and the lab. These are actually hands, so you don't have to worry about that. But after that is done, the next player is going to get to go, simply drawing a card. Got a creation unit here. And now we'll be able to play something as well. Looking through his hand, all the stuff he has simply costs too much, so he'll just go ahead and choose one of the cards he has. He'll play that one there and end his turn. The next player is going to get to draw again. Ooh, we got another creation unit of a different type here, but we want to be able to play a card, so we'll take this blue one out here. Now we can simply go ahead and move these to the side and bring this equipment into the lab. When you bring an equipment into the lab, that simply means that you can use it on the next turn to put it onto a monster, and that monster can attack with the specific bonus or ability here on the bottom. The next thing is he is done. The next player is going to get simply draw a card and put it down. Okay, you got another creation unit. That's pretty useful. We got red, blue. We have all four different colors. So what do we want to do here? Let's go ahead and place this one out and we'll go ahead and move these to the side and we will play this card here. This is called Creation Oracle. It lets you search your deck for a creation unit and put that card into your hand. This says it needs two red, so we'll go ahead and search for a red creation unit, putting that into our hand so that we can use it on our next turn if we'd like to play a card that could be useful and beneficial. We've shuffled our deck, we place it like this, and it is now the next player's turn. Now remember that whenever you play a spell or power, it's going to go to the graveyard or to the discard pile, just like that, and it will no longer be able to be used unless you can bring it back. On your turn, if you have anything that's turned to the side, you can simply turn it back up, and then you're going to draw another card here. This we got is a robot that will be put over here, and what do we want to play now? Let's see here. We still don't have enough to play this one, but oh, we can't play that one either. We'll just go ahead and simply put one of these out. We'll turn these to the side using the power and we'll get a new creation unit bam now we got another one and we're going to go ahead and shuffle our deck up place it face down and uh, we are now done we can't do anything else next player is going to get to go simply draws a card we'll play this blue one over here and let's see what we can do now. We can play this one if we'd like. This is a being. It's going to cost one blue, one red, and then one white. White is any. We'll, tap, uh, we'll move these to the side, and then we'll simply play this one here. Um, just there's, Obviously, there's a lot of space missing, but you go ahead and put it like that. Now, when your first turn, you play a being, cyborg, or robot, you can't attack with it. It's not able to, but on your next turn, you'll be able to, as well as equipping equipment on it. As you can see, there's three different types of stats on here. You've got green and blue and red. Red is going to be physical damage. These are going to be basically defenses. When you choose to attack with one of these guys, when you're able to, you're going to basically compare the stats of one of the type as an attacker. So I would choose this one as an attacker. It has a four attack and four defense. And you're going to actually be interesting to look at this chart here, which I'll explain in a second. We'll go ahead and try and play another turnout so we can get another creature on board. Now we want the one of these guys on board here. See if we can find which one we can do. We'll put this one, and that will come out. These are un these are unturned, and then we're going to go ahead and move them over. Bam, and get this guy out. Now we've got another guy out. This is a robot. Robot that also has an ability here at the bottom. It says that a player can roll a die, and if it and if it's even, it's times two physical attack strength. If it's odd, it's half times the physical attack strength, which is up here. This is the physical attack strength, which is how you do damage to your opponent's life points. All right, that's it for that turn. This guy's going to go ahead and do his turn now. A robot. We're going to put that there and place. Mm, put this green one out here. Let's go ahead and put something else out. How about let's find an equipment card, right? Let's put this one out. And that's going to be red, and that's going to be purple. All right, now he can simply choose to attack if he would like. And, of course, your opponent can choose to block, provided they're able to. This player can block like this. And in this case, you're going to resolve it like this. The attacker will choose this one here. And, of course, it's got a zero, so we can't do that. And this is also a zero, so we can't do that one as well. So it would actually move on to the physical. And that is where it gets interesting, because you're going to go ahead and look at this chart here. And it will tell you one attack, which is the one here. And then, of course, two defense defense, which is a two here, which means this player needs a nine plus to defeat this monster. He'll roll the dice. If he gets higher, then he's able to destroy the monster. If he did not get higher, the monster would have a chance to attack back with his two to the opponent's one, which means he's, he's an eight plus, and which would also kill it. But luckily for him, he actually destroyed the monster. It would actually go to the graveyard. Now, presumably he didn't block. This damage would go straight through, and it would hit your uh, opponent's life points, bringing them down to whatever health you had s s decided. Minus one. We chose 30, so would go to 29 points, which is how you beat them in a battle. After that is done, then it would move on to the next player's turn once again. You can attack with multiple creatures, and what's also interesting too is if you have multiple creatures out on the battlefield and they're able to attack,
attack, you can actually choose to, first of all, equip them, but also attack together. You can only attack with a, multiple, with a total of two, uh, four cards, two different types of creatures, as well as two different types of equipment, and that you would actually add up all the different stats. Now, the battle, which I didn't show you for blue and for green, if we actually had one to do, let's go ahead and look at, let's see if I can find one really quickly to show you. For instance, if I had this one right here, and I was choosing to attack with this one here and chose to block, what would happen is you would reduce, use the chart for the same way. You take this chart here and look at it, and it would say, okay, one to the one, and what do you need? You need an eight plus, and you'd roll that, that wouldn't work, and then the other player would get to their two to the one, and you'd roll that, and that would be a seven or higher, which is enough. And if that's enough, then this is actually going to be stunned, which means he can't participate really in the physical phase, and the other player can. He'll be using his two to the four. So you look at the two, you look at the four, he needs a 10 plus. If he got that 10 plus, he would defeat this monster. If not, uh, then it's going to just be a draw. No one is going to take any damage at all. And that's basically the idea. Of course, there's going to be additional abilities and whatnot on all the different monsters, and they all have their own unique aspects, which I'll explain above. But if you can get your opponent's health points to zero by either destroying all their monsters and then hitting them directly or simply destroying their life points, you're going to win the game Psy Wars. So a couple caveats before we get into the review. Now, of course, there is quite a few different types of powers or traps, and they will allow you to do certain things to monsters, like this one here is going to freeze a unit. They cannot attack or be attacked. And in order to free them, you have to roll 13 minus the physical attack strength of the monster. Otherwise, it stays frozen. And there's other different abilities like that. You're also going to have three different types of monsters, right? Like I was saying, cyborg, robot, and being. Cyborgs are able to use their abilities that they have as soon as they come into play. Whether they can attack on the same turn or not is depending on what they say, but in general, they can't. However, as long as they're not in combat they can use their ability and some of them will do certain things this one will actually give one cyber attack strength to a robot or a cyber uh, robots are different robots usually will occur after battle has taken place like for instance this one allows you to roll a die and double its attack or reduce its attack depending on what you roll and then beings are generally just stronger monsters with powers uh, and they don't have usually typically any type of damaging abilities or specials on them but at, at least that's as far as I have seen you're also gonna notice that there is four different types of creation units and you're gonna want to get all of those out into play so you can play all of the cards in in your deck and all the cards in the deck range from roughly about two to about six um two to five maybe a cost to play them the more cost the stronger the monster or the more likely it is that they're going to have some powerful ability to help you win the game the last thing to note like i was saying before is you can equip your monsters with an equipment one per monster and you can also attach monsters with another monster with another monster you can only pair uh two different types of creatures and you can only have one equipment on each of them so a total of four cards Cards when you choose to simply attack, which can be blocked as well by monsters that are stacked. You don't have to though, and you can attack with multiple creatures throughout the game uh, to try and get through your opponent's to your opponent's health points to reduce them to zero. That's the basic idea now. Hopefully you got a uh, good understanding of how to play the game. Let me tell you what I think about it. All right, so what do I think about the game Psy Wars? Well, let's go ahead and start with the good aspects of the game first. Firstly, they have these really, really cool foil cards, and I don't know if you can see them actually on the film, but they move back and forth just like you would see on those like Oh, I don't know, Cracker Jack box type of uh, pictures that kind of will move back and forth. The creatures are moving. I really like the aspect of these. I think these are better than the other foils than like other games like Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic have because this kind of adds a little bit of movement, a little bit of action. I also think the artwork in this game is tremendous. It has some really, really great artwork. It's got really cool robots, really cool science fiction style theme, and the battling presents itself in a way that you feel like you're putting your, your robots together to fight. Um, I also like the fact that it has this die rolling ability with this chart here, which gives it kind of a more unique and interesting way of battling. Just because your monster is stronger doesn't necessarily mean your monster is going to defeat the other opponent's monster. It has a little bit of added luck to, in that aspect, but you are still more likely to win with stronger monsters. So it's not like you're guaranteed to lose, but it's also that you're more likely to as well. So that is interesting. The different abilities are nice. This game does present a lot of the same qualities as Magic the Gathering in a lot of senses and it doesn't really fix a lot of the problems that I believe magic has so talking about the negatives are first of all you're gonna have four different colors in your deck here these are basically like lands or, or currency or some of some type in most TCGs they have them and you need them in order to bring your monsters out by drawing them from the deck however just like other TCGs the problem is you don't really necessarily get the cards you want all the time and you can't really subsidize how you're gonna be able to do that there's no deck of, of the specific uh, creation units that you can just pull from in order to get luckier 
You just have to have a decent hand size. Luckily, you're able to discard the cards you have and draw new ones at the beginning to try and get that better hand, but still can cause that problem. And I don't really know a real good solution other than separating the decks, um, like I think Heroes of Karth does. Uh, also, the interesting thing about these beings and stuff like that is how the equipment works, and you can attach them together, which I like that aspect because it kind of makes sure feels like you're putting together a, mo a monster mech fighting against other opponents' monsters. And it has three different unique aspects to it, right? You've got blue, and you've got green and red. Now, the first two are basically defensive abilities that try and stun the opponent, and the last one is going to be that attacking thing. And uh, if you can get through that, if you can have a, 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 if you have a good strategy on how your opponent's board is and how you want to place your units out, you can usually get through your opponent's uh, defenses. However, there was times we were playing and we were rolling the dice, and it was just a back and forth, back and forth thing. Monsters were not dying, and uh, basically just based on how the die roll. So it has a lot of that luck aspect. So basically if you like TCGs and you like a little bit of extra luck factor in the game, it's also made by a, I believe a father and a son combination, which is really cool. I think the way they did this was really unique and interesting. They brought back a lot of the stuff they liked from their specific TCGs and put it into a game. Um, so basically it's gonna be one of those things where if somebody asked me to play this game, I probably would. I don't really have an issue with it, but there's a lot of other games that are very similar to it. Some things they did better, some things they added that were very unique in this game. Honestly, it's going to be dependent on you whether you think this is a good purchase or not. You can check it out in the description below for the game Psy Wars if you think it's something you'd like to play. Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. If you like this video, go check out the subscribe videos. If you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help and we do greatly appreciate it. As well as checking out the game Psy Wars on Kickstarter in the description below. If you're interested in a little bit of cybernetic uh, card game madness and paddling, then you should definitely check this one out. As well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. You can go ahead and check out all of our content there, as well as our artist page and our giveaways we're currently doing for AEG but for Space Base. A really cool little game. Not only that, but you can go check out our friends at everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek they do some great content as well as have some great giveaways as well all right guys that's all i got for this time and as always i look forward to seeing you guys next time